Having mains power can really transform your van life experience. For example, toast. Or using the microwave. If you want some of these luxuries in your van, you're either going to need a huge battery bank, which could potentially cost you a lot of money, or you're going to need a way to hook up to mains power. There are a number of ways that you can get mains power with hookup in your van, but how do you do it if you have minimal to zero electrical skills? In this video, we're going to show you how we did it. Option one. Using some kind of changeover switch. Option two. Or putting in separate cables directly for the hookup. Option three. Or you could use some kind of jackery system or a generator. Option four. 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 Or, like we did, you can use an inverter charger like this one. But before we go into details of the inverter charger, why would we not use any of the first three options? For the changeover switch, for us, it just seemed too difficult to do. We didn't really know where to start with it. Um, some people have created some really fancy like control boxes um, which were just too complicated for people of our level. Separate cables uh, would require separate, separate plug sockets. So you've got your main socket and you'd have two lots of sockets potentially. Um, one for inverted power and one for mains power and that just seems messy and confusing. You'd be like, which one do I actually need to use right now? To use something like a jackery or a generator, these things are not permanent installations in the van. They're sort of separate units that you have to carry around and place near the item that you want to plug in. And obviously a generator, it runs all the time, it's a bit loud, it can be a bit stinky and it's not really something you want in the van itself. So it just seemed not like a very good overall solution. Let's go through why we chose this inverter charger. The main reason we chose this option was because of the inbuilt transfer switch. That means it knows whether, whether you're getting power from a mains hookup or from your batteries. Reason two. This particular unit is a low frequency inverter, which not only means it has extra surge protection, but it's also extremely robust. Reason three. For novice electricians like us, it comes with very good and very clear instructions for installation and for use. It was really simple to wire up. Let's take a look at how we did it. A pure sine wave combination inverter charger. Uh, 2000 watt but with a 6000 watt surge capacity. This is where this is where the cables go from your batteries. And we can see the earth wire there running down and then we need to connect it from the the loads positive on this battery here uh, and the loads negative on this battery which have got really dusty somehow need to give those a quick hoover off okay so we've got the mains input and all the outputs wired into the into the inverter so let's take a look but let's start with the inputs The input here from the mains which is obviously not plugged in yet but that cable runs down the side into the front there as you can see and then the other input being this from the batteries via this 200 amp breaker two sets of outputs on here so there's uh, just a normal plug and on that is going to be the one that goes straight into the microwave so there's a fuse on the plug itself and there's a fuse on the plug at the other end there's a built-in fuse within this and there'll be a fuse from the power supply into the inverter uh, and then we've got just like a clamp screwing terminals down here and I've put two cables going into that one short one that literally goes to, to here which will be for a double socket in the bench and then the other one feeds the other two sockets in the wall. For balance let's talk about some of the downsides of this inverter charger. So I guess probably a lot of you would have noticed uh, the size of the unit itself 
it is a lot bigger than a normal inverter um, so and that means it's actually also quite a lot heavier as well so you've got the size and the weight element I guess one point that kind of counters this is more the fact that when you were to have a different solution you would still require you know, extra additional wiring or control box or something like that so perhaps it's balanced out overall maybe still a, a bit heavier the second downside is that it's a little bit more expensive than an inverter without an inbuilt charger. It was This was about £100 more, which brings it to about £400 in total. But when you consider additional components for other solutions and maybe a separate mains charger, then the option that we've gone for might actually work out to be a little bit cheaper. Probably the biggest downside for us personally on this inverter charger, and this would be different for, for other people, um, but obviously by the name inverter charger which means it also should give you power but also should charge your batteries as well when it's plugged into the mains however this particular unit doesn't actually work with lithium batteries and that's what we went for, we went for lithium batteries uh, it worked with gel batteries or AGM batteries it will work with all of those other types of batteries um, but for us it hasn't actually worked with lithium batteries Fortunately for us it hasn't been a problem so far because the solar panels have actually done a really good job of topping up the batteries. I should add that you can get inverter chargers that do work with lithium batteries. Um, however, from our kind of extensive research and looking around, you are really looking at a Victron or something like that and that's three times the price of this unit. However, the main reason we wanted it was for the uninterrupted power supply mode which has worked perfectly for us so far. So. How have we found the inverter so far? We've been using this inverter charger for three months now and overall we're very very happy with how it's been performing. I guess just some of the some of the highlights is it, it very rarely cuts out um, if it does cut out then it, it comes back on very quickly it makes very little noise uh, it comes with a remote switch um, so I don't have to go playing around with it under the bench to, to turn it on and off. It draws very little power so even when it's on it's only using about 2 amps if there's nothing plugged into it but it does also come with a, a power saver mode which means that it's kind of in a standby standby phase and not, not using any power at all or maybe half an amp or something it's so you actually plug something in and turn it on then it's kind of ready to go and there's very little delay in it in it starting up. When you first set it up the settings are pretty easy to use. Uh, it's not. It took me maybe five minutes or so just to put the right settings on. Um, so yeah, overall we're very happy with our Photonic Universe low frequency inverter charger three months down the line. Thank you for watching. We hope you found this useful. And if you do have any questions, then please let us know in the comments. Finally, please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. then do let us know in the comments. Finally, please don't subscribe. <laughs> no, please do. <laughs> please do subscribe. No, please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. <laughs> <laughs> Should we do that again? <laughs> yeah. Don't subscribe to these images. <laughs>